What is Celestia? Celestia has created some buzz in the crypto industry recently after its highly anticipated mainnet launch took place. Besides, the Chia airdrop treated lots of Atom stakers very pleasantly. But why are so many people in the crypto industry so excited about Celestia's launch? And why do a lot of them also believe that so-called modular blockchains are the future of crypto? Let's find out. If you have been around crypto for a couple of months, you have likely heard about the blockchain trilemma. In a nutshell, it describes the trade-off between scalability, security and decentralization a blockchain has to make in its architecture. Since security is an aspect you do not want to sacrifice a lot, it usually comes down to weighing scalability against decentralization. On the one extreme, you can find chains like Bitcoin or Ethereum, which are highly decentralized, and on the other hand, you have blockchains like the Binance Smart Chain. So, we have seen some solutions approaches, such as layer 2s, rollups, or subnets. However, what about rethinking how we set up blockchains in general? This is where Celestia comes into play. But before we dive deeper into Celestia, we must reflect on today's broadly used blockchain architecture, monolithic blockchains. All of today's well-known blockchains, besides Celestia, are monolithic blockchains primarily. On monolithic blockchains, validators must simultaneously perform consensus and execution on these chains. Validators, such as us, friends validator, verify transactions, put them into blocks and add them to the blockchain. Consensus describes nodes agreeing on which transactions happened in what order. Execution describes the process on interpreting these transactions. A state transition can occur with execution, for example, changes in account balances after you send your friend Chad some ETH on the Ethereum network. The more nodes and validators a blockchain has, the more decentralized it is, since more independent validators review and finally execute transactions. But, consequently, monolithic blockchains can only scale their block size as far as the slowest node can keep up. Otherwise, the node will drop out and the chain would have to sacrifice decentralization to scale further, as increasing the block size equally increases hardware requirements. In addition to scalability, monolithic architecture also limits developers' flexibility in building dApps. When creating smart contracts on top, if consensus and execution are unified on one layer, one is inherently bound to the execution environment, for example, the EVM on Ethereum. TLDR, developers sacrifice customization flexibility when building a dApp on top of a monolithic blockchain. Again. All of the well-known blockchains we know today, like Ethereum, Solana, Avalanche and so on, are monolithic blockchains. Generally, monolithic blockchains worked well so far, considering the rapid growth of the crypto industry and DeFi specifically in the past three years. Also, all of them have different approaches to solving the mentioned problem. Ethereum aims to move most transactions activities to so-called layer 2s, and Avalanche, for example, works with subnets. But Celestia tries to tackle its problem at the root by introducing modular blockchains, an alternative to today's monolithic blockchains. So what are modular blockchains? Modular blockchains separate consensus and execution in two separate layers. Therefore, one layer is optimized for consensus and data availability, while the other is for execution. That's it. Modular blockchains decouple the formerly unified consensus and execution layer and use Data Availability Sampling DAS, to ensure the transaction data is retrievable. In Celestia's case of its modular blockchain, its Celestia incentivizes projects to build roll-up style chains on top of its data availability and consensus layer. However, Celestia's nodes are not concerned about their validity since the roll-up layers on top take care of that. By separating the three essential functionalities of blockchains, consensus, data availability and execution, Celestia enables teams to deploy new blockchains effortlessly and fosters the spread of more app-specific chains. 
This approach is much more suitable for application-specific chains since they can optimize their execution environment for one specific use case and not worry about bootstrapping their own consensus mechanism. Also, the modular approach frees developers from being bound to one specific execution environment, an example the EVM on Ethereum regarding its programming language, since they can deploy their dApps on various execution layers that all utilize the same reliable consensus layer. Thus, modular blockchains fundamentally differ from the established framework of monolithic blockchains. Therefore, modular blockchains can improve the security flexibility and scalability of dApps. Again, Celestia is responsible for the consensus and data availability functions within the modular blockchain framework. Thus, full nodes only read the data of a transaction but are not involved with the execution. Then, they ensure that the transaction data in the block is available in case it needs to be retrieved. Traditionally, full nodes must download all blockchain transactions to verify that the data is available. However, would nodes not face a similar problem of limited scalability when blocks grow significantly? To address this issue, Data Availability Sampling DAS, steps in. As a full node on Celestia, you're not required to download the entire block. Instead, every node samples a randomized chunk. Assuming that enough honest nodes are participating, we now have a high certainty that all data in the block is available. According to Celestia Lab CEO Mustafa Al-Bassam, one can even run a Celestia node on a mobile phone. With DAS in place, blocks can grow in size and TPS, short for transactions per second, can be increased without sacrificing security in terms of decentralized block validation as long as users have proper incentive structures so that the number of nodes in the network grows accordingly. If we assume this to be fulfilled, the supply of Celestia's block space will, to some extent, be a function of user demand. Thus. Fees can stay low and stable despite user and demand growth. On the contrary, on monolithic chains, most prominently Ethereum, we witness spikes in demand for block space leading to high fees. Furthermore, Celestia's architecture enables execution layers built on top to utilize trust-minimized bridges. Since the chains share a data availability layer and can interpret each other's fraud and validity proofs, they can form clusters. Within these clusters, intra-clusters, chains can communicate in a trust-minimized way. An example, they do not have to rely on another consensus mechanism than their shared underlying. Chains can communicate in a less secure, trusted manner between clusters, similar to current L1 to L1 bridges. Now that we understand Celestia from a technical perspective, let's have a closer look at the team. Let's start with Celestia Lab CEO Mustafa Al-Bassam. Mustafa has a background in computer science and wrote his PhD thesis on securely scaling blockchain-based layers, co-authored by Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin. He went on to co-found Chainspace, which Facebook acquired. Finally, in 2019, he co-founded Celestia. Ismail Kofi is the co-founder and CTO of Celestia Labs. Like Mustafa, he also has a background in computer science and worked with Tendermint, the Interchain Foundation and Informal Systems. John Adler is the third co-founder of Celestia Labs and their CRO. John has a background in electrical and computer engineering, worked for Consensus and co-founded Few Labs. If you want to meet the entire team, have a look at the Celestia website. In times of troubling market conditions and ambitious growth, having good VCs and advisors on board is always helpful. They can support the team with necessary funds to scale, have a valuable network and provide advice when they face tricky decisions. On the advisor side, you might recognize a name or two. Ethan Buchmann and Zaki Menyon are among the most prominent thought leaders and builders in the Cosmos ecosystem. With Matthew Di Ferrante, they also have one of the earliest Ethereum contributors on the advisor team. I also linked the full advisory board in the show notes. Now, let's have a look at Celestia's investors. On Cypher Hunter, you can find an overview of all VCs invested in Celestia Labs. Most notable are Binance Labs, KR1 and the Interchain Foundation. 
I linked an article in the show notes that confirms the parties involved in their 1.5 million seed round. Overall, most VCs backing Celestia have established names in the crypto space. Having no pay to shill crypto influencers and no VCs with a moonboy mentality is a very strong sign in my opinion. Speaking of investing, let's have a look at Celestia's native token Chia and its tokenomics. Chia secures the network since token holders can stake it to validators and earn staking rewards. Additionally, users will need the token to pay transaction fees when using the network. An example for executing transactions or for posting and making data available on the Celestia layer. Besides, if developers decide to launch their own customized chain via Celestia, they can also decide to use Chia as their own gas token and currency in addition to paying for data availability. That's how developers do not have to deal with complicated tokenomics designs in the beginning but can focus on building an application that attracts users. Finally, Chia is also the governance token of Celestia, meaning that when holding Chia you can vote on the most recent Celestia governance proposals. Furthermore, Celestia plans to introduce a fee-burning mechanism similar to EIP-1559 on Ethereum. Reducing circulating supply combined with constant and growing demand is another catalyst for value accrual. At Genesis, Celestia's total supply was 1 billion. This year, so in the first year of Celestia's existence, this total supply will be inflated by another 8%. After one year, this inflation will be decreased by 10% annually until an inflation floor of 1.5% has been reached. Compared to a lot of other tokens in crypto, Chia's tokenomics seem pretty strong. There is a clear use case and potential buying demand for Chia and the inflation rate of 8% in the first year is extremely low compared to multiple high inflation tokens. Early stage projects tend to inflate their currency like crazy to attract early adopters. In the Cosmos ecosystem, we have seen that with Osmosis and most prominently with FMOS, where we have seen inflation rates far beyond 100% in the first year. This is definitely not the case with Celestia. However, keep in mind that with its current total supply, Celestia also already has a fully diluted market cap of $2.3 billion at the time of recording and seed investors already made a huge gain with Celestia, which represents a risk for smaller investors. Now let's have a look at what Celestia has to do in order to succeed. Like all new crypto projects, a significant challenge for Celestia will be the initial bootstrapping of network effects. The team needs to carefully design incentive mechanisms to bring on additional nodes so that Celestia can achieve the scale it promises. Related to the issue of incentivizing node scaling, Celestia also has to ensure demand from execution chains. Since Celestia itself is only a consensus and data availability layer, there is no use for it without execution layers on top. So they need to incentivize teams to build execution layers in the form of dApps on top of its consensus and data layer. The second aspect of our risk analysis is the novel sector in which Celestia operates. The project aims to introduce an unprecedented paradigm of blockchain architecture. Thus, we always have a risk of moving from zero to one since we have no prior data for the demand for such a solution. Keep your eyes open to potential competitors and remember that novel solutions that have not been battle tested are often prime targets for attempted exploits. Considering the revolutionary vision and its challenges, what is our outlook for Celestia? If Celestia succeeds, it can offer the crypto industry an unprecedented combination of scalability, flexibility and sovereignty. As outlined, we can expect modular blockchains to be the best solution available to scale. Also, since devs are no longer limited to any specific execution environment, they can enjoy greater flexibility while utilizing a solid consensus layer. Contrary to layer 2s on Ethereum, you can think of rollups on Celestia as sovereign chains. They can fork without significant security risks. We will likely see a more innovation and willingness to experiment among Celestia rollups than on existing layer 1 ecosystems since devs can deploy blockchains effortlessly. For governance, the modular architecture allows execution layers to move fast and break things, while changes to their execution environment do not impact the underlying consensus layer. The separation of performance and social coordination focused governance issues into their layers can contribute to more efficient governance processes. 
Since Celestia also wants to support the Cosmos SDK, the project can contribute to the growth of the Cosmos ecosystem. IBC-enabled chains are no longer required to bootstrap their proof-of-stake consensus, but can instead rely on Celestia and solely focus on execution. While Celestia has tremendous upside in adoption, if its novel approach succeeds, its main challenge lies in designing a proper incentivized system to foster product usage and token utility and increasing the number of nodes securing the network. But now let us know what you think about Celestia. Have you received the Chia airdrop? If you want to stake your Chia airdrop, why not stake it with us? You can find the link to our validator in the show notes. Please keep in mind, as always, that this content does not represent financial advice. And with that being said, I hope I see you the next time.